this week's movies. OJ Made in America, The Nice Guys, and Maggie's Plan. I overheard your conversation about how like is a language prophylactic. Ah, yeah. Mm -hmm. What is fictocritical anthropology anyway? In Maggie's Plan, a young woman falls in love with a married part-time professor. In his review, A.O. Scott writes, the movie's protagonist, Maggie, looks like a recognizable type of modern comic character, and the plot takes a shape that you might have seen before. A middle-aged intellectual leaves behind a difficult, accomplished woman his age for a younger, less ego-threatening mate. Yet, filmmaker Rebecca Miller, known for disregarding storytelling conventions, slyly subverts the ubiquitous paradigm of romantic comedy. The movie is not about John's self-esteem, it's about Maggie's plan. Like its heroine, the movie is reluctant to make large claims or excessive demands, but is also clear-eyed, generous, and funny. Why are you trying to get me back together with him? Because I think that actually, even though I do think you are pretty self-absorbed and extremely needy, that he needs it. It keeps him in balance. It's thinking about you that stops him from only thinking about himself. You beat people up and charge money? Yeah. Sad, isn't it? That's really your job? Yeah. No way. Yeah. In Shane Black's buddy comedy, The Nice Guys, a private eye and his hired muscle try to solve the mysterious death of a porn star in 1977 Los Angeles. In his review, A.O. Scott writes, The Nice Guys is a dirty movie with a political message, but it's also a nostalgic totem. The point is less historical accuracy than pop cultural period riffing. The 1970s are evoked through musical cues, details of production and costume design, and allusions to other films. The movie is testament to Mr. Black's cleverness and also a recognition of its limits. This is a dumb movie pretending to be smart, even as it wants you to believe the opposite. Still, dumb can be fun. March! Go! Go! <laughs> I told him, OJ, you're breaking the laws of God. One day, everybody's gonna know everything that you've done, man. OJ, Made in America, a staggering five-part installment of ESPN's 30 for 30 documentary series, explores the football star's rise and fall. In his review, A.O. Scott writes, Though dominated by the trial, Ezra Edelman's documentary extends the narrative in both directions, producing a detailed biography of O.J. Simpson that is also a social history of race, fame, sports, and Los Angeles over the past half century. I can somebody say I can kill this woman. It has grandeur and authority of the best long-form nonfiction. A feat of tireless research, dogged interviewing, and skillful editing, it is hard not to notice the film's narrowness when it comes to discussing domestic violence. This is a significant blind spot, but OJ, made in America, sees a great deal very clearly and does not flinch from what it sees. OJ Simpson as a civil rights victim, it was disgusting, it was appalling. 